Welcome to Electro Online, and now we're going to take a look at the photon in a different way. We're going to look at the cosmic microwave background. You may say, well, what is the cosmic microwave background? Well, we'll call it CMB for short, is the radiation that's left over in the universe from the very beginning, the very beginning when the Big Bang happened, when the universe was filled with radiation. That radiation, whatever portion didn't make matter, is still out there floating around in all directions. Space is simply filled with it. We discovered that back in the 1960s when those two Bell Lab engineers went out and they started um, doing experiments with their first radio telescope. They, be they discovered this radiation and it turned out that the radiation is uniform throughout the entire universe. Of course, that radiation is made up of, you know it, photons. The photons have a specific wavelength and that wavelength is correspondent to the temperature of 2.726 degrees Kelvin, which is the current temperature of the universe. So if we use Wien's law, we can actually figure out the wavelength of that radiation and it's extremely uniform all throughout the universe. Of course, that radiation has the black body curve, the very peculiar black body curve like this. And of course, the peak radiation is the one that corresponds to 2.726 Kelvin. But the band is fairly narrow and everything is very tuned to this particular wavelength on the black body curve. So let's find out what that wavelength is. The wavelength is equal to 0.0029 divided by uh, the temperature is 2.726 Kelvin and this of course would be meters uh, or Kelvin times meters actually. Let me go ahead and raise that. The units of that constant is Kelvin times meters and so we end up with wavelength in meters. So with a calculator 0.0029 divided by 2.726 equals so the wavelength is equal to 1.064 millimeters. That's the current wavelength of the CMB, the cosmic microwave background radiation that now permeates through the entire universe. But it hasn't always been like that because what we found was that as the universe has been expanding ever since the Big Bang, we know that at some point the universe went from the very beginning to what we call the decoupling period, which is about 380,000 years after the beginning of the universe. At that point, the universe had cooled down to about 3,000 Kelvin. At that point also, the radiation was able to, f to flow free freely and roam freely to the universe because at a temperature below 3,000 Kelvin, the electrons would then join in with the protons and with the alpha particles to form helium, and all of a sudden, radiation was free to roam through the universe. At that point, the radiation wavelength, and we can then, of course, use Wien's law to figure out what it was then. So the wavelength was equal to 0 0.0029 Kelvin times meters divided by 3,000 Kelvin. And so lambda was equal to 0.0029 divided by 3,000. And we get a wavelength of 967 nanometers, which is equal to 0 0.000967 millimeters. Notice the wavelength of the light back then, or I shouldn't say light, it's really, at that point it was infrared radiation, the cosmic microwave background, the wavelength was about a little bit less than 1 1,000 that it is today. So this is what it was at the beginning of the universe after decoupling, 380,000 years after the universe started, and it has grown in size to this value right here. How has the radiation, how have those photons stretched from what they were then, just slightly under micrometer, to just slightly above a millimeter during those last 13.8 billion years, because that's about how old the universe is? Well, it turns out, as those photons were continuously roaming through the universe for that entire duration, 13.8 billion years, the universe has grown in size, which means space itself has stretched. Space itself has grown. And as photons are roaming through space and space is actually expanding, the photons themselves expand along with space. So it's like photons going through a spider web and as you pull the spider web out, the photons get bigger along with the spider web. Space is that spider web. Well, not exactly, of course, but space is also not nothing. It is something. It's like the fabric of space. And as photons travel through space, as space changes size, in this case stretched and grown in size over the billions and billions of years, the photons grew with it. So photons actually change shape as space itself changes. Just an amazing thing. And so what we can say then is how much bigger is the universe today compared to what it was back 380,000 years after the universe had started? Well, 
since the wavelengths have grown a little over a thousand times in size, the universe has grown a thousand times in size in all directions. A thousand times in this direction, a thousand times in this direction, a thousand times in this direction. The volume has grown more than a billion times what it was when the universe was only 380,000 years old. Imagine the universe has grown from what it was then to what it is today, and today it is more than a billion times as the volume that it was back then. And the result of that is as the radiation called the cosmic background or the cosmic microwave background, as it's been, as the universe has been stretching, the waves have been stretching, 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 where today the wavelength is about one millimeter, where back then it was about one micrometer. And so you see that not only is our photons subjected to gravity, photons are subjected to space itself. And as space stretches, photons stretch with them. And there's another look at what photons are.